the history of religion has been very problematic. And when I say that religion has been problematic, I'm talking about religious institutions and, and various organizations, especially those with political power. We know in the West that the history of Christianity has been marred by so many political actions. You know, throughout Western history, Christians have killed each other over minor doctrinal issues. Christians have killed Jews and, and banned them from Europe. Christians have killed Muslims. Christians have, you know, taken the land from indigenous people and killed them. They kidnapped African people and brought them to the Americas to work as slaves. Christians have done all kinds of things, all in the name of religion, all while calling on God. But it's not just Christians. If we look at global history, we see that other religions have done the same things, or maybe I should say other people have done the same things in the name of those religions. So that Muslims and Buddhists and Confucius and so many other groups have waged wars and enslaved people in the name of defending their faiths. It's really tragic to see what has happened in history and what continues to happen. And we know that part of that continuation is the level of sexual abuse and pedophilia that's occurred, as well as the financial scandals that we still see regularly in the news. Religion has been very problematic. At the same time, we have to acknowledge that there are many, many people who have found their spiritual path through religion. Through religion, they have found teachings that have nourished their life and really supported them and opened them to deep experiences. So how do we reconcile this really criminal history with the enlightenment that can be associated with religion? As I talk about some of that, I want to invite you to subscribe to this channel and click the bell so you're notified of future videos. And think about how this is impacting your life and make some comments about it, as well as if there are people you can share this with who would want to be engaged with these thoughts. So I can't justify, I can't make up for anything that's been done in the name of religion. I think it's scandalous. I think it's horrific but yet I recognize that it's there. I also recognize that I'm a person whose spiritual life was developed within the context of religion. I got lucky in many ways. I look back over my life and I realize that early on, my teachers in meditation, which I began meditation in high school, they were religious people. They were people who taught me other spiritual practices out of the context of religion. And you know, I recognize that these people were focused on the spiritual practice, on, on the nurturing. They didn't get caught up in the politics. They weren't interested in that. And as I've looked at my own connection in religious institutions, and I've been, you know, clergy in three different denominations, I realized that church life is not different from other parts of life. There are people who seek power because they want power. There are people who want control and so they seek it out. And there are some very wounded people who act out of their woundedness. And yes, it's the responsibility of religious institutions to hold these people to accountability and that often doesn't happen. But the same kind of bad behavior that we see in people, in corporations, or in the political realm, happens in churches, happens in religious organizations. It's about people that do these things, who seek out power and control, and they use the, the spiritual stuff as a cover. And we see that happening in politics, and we see that happening in corporate life. So it's all very much the same. So where does that leave us? We can't deny what's happened. We can't deny history. That's real. And we know that some of these problems continue as 
sexual abuse scandals and financial scandals continue to unfold. But we're at a different point in history. We're at a point in history where everyone in the world has access to the internet and access to resources to learn about spirituality and spiritual practice and can really access teachers who are working to support their spiritual journey. It depends on us to really take responsibility for working out our spiritual lives, for making decisions about that. It's because of that, about 10 years ago, I decidedly stopped referring to myself as being Christian. That's because I don't want to be associated of institutional Christianity. I refer to myself as a follower of the teachings of Jesus because I really cling to the message of Jesus about love and compassion and caring for others to do the right thing in the world. And so that's where my focus is. In that process, I found that in order to save my faith in the teachings of Jesus, I needed to lose my religion. And at this point, I'm, I'm not involved in any particular church any longer because I see fundamentally there's that corruption that exists in all of the churches. And so I form community in my own ways and I'm very rigorous about my own spiritual path. I've taken responsibility for myself. Your decisions may be very different from my own, but I think it's important to recognize that there's this sharp division between the history of religion and what we need to do for our own spiritual path. And perhaps you too will find that you need to, to hold your faith by losing your religion. Thanks for your time. Be sure to subscribe, leave comments, and know that I appreciate your time on Spirituality Beyond Borders.